Hello everyone, HJG White from eToro here. How are you doing? Oh, just spilt tea all over myself. All right, it's finally here. We have the Q4 earnings for Warner Brothers Discovery and there's a lot to update you on. Like a $6 billion free cash flow, a 3 billion in losses, which aren't really losses. The fact that in 18 months, we have now paid off 12 billion of the 53 billion we borrowed in order to purchase Discovery. And finally, that we have no variable rate debt left. All of our debt is now on average 5% and it is completely fixed. So that means in central banks' interest rates no longer affect us. Warner Brothers Discovery, you might know them as the owners of Discovery Plus or HBO Max or Harry Potter, Friends and the DC Universe. Or you might know them as one of Michael Burry's biggest and currently oldest positions in the stock market. Michael Burry is the legendary investor that started shorting the housing crisis five years before 2008, played by Christian Bale in 2008, The Big Short. If you haven't seen that film, go watch it now, it's awesome. Michael Burry is what I like to call a value investor. That is someone who buys based on the earnings of the company and will only buy a company if they are being sold at a price that is discounted to the past earnings. So when in one of his SEC filings, I got to see that there, uh, that Warner Brothers Discovery was in his portfolio, I decided to do my own due, uh, due diligence and check out the stock. While owning streaming platforms is fantastic, owning the rights to shows that people watch over and over and over again is better. It'd be very hard to get someone to change their Netflix subscription, but it would be much, much harder to stop people from watching Harry Potter or Friends ever again. Therefore, this deal has made Warner Brothers Discovery one of the most powerful companies in the stock market. However, AT&T shareholders might not see it that way. And the reason that's important is because Warner Media purchased Discovery off AT&T. And what happened was, as part of the payment, AT&T shareholders got some Warner Brothers Discovery stock as payment. That means AT&T shareholders who are used to a steady 5% annual dividend suddenly had a stock that issued no dividend and had $53 billion worth of debt. We can't know for sure without interviewing everyone who sold at the time, but I get the feeling that a lot of these AT&T shareholders sold the stock the second they were gifted it, which sent the share price crashing. I know the $53 billion worth of debt would have scared a lot of people and there was not a lot of evidence that Warner Brothers Discovery at the time had the means in order to pay off this debt. However, this did not scare Michael Burry and it didn't scare me. Well, it scared me a little bit. I was a bit hesitant to add more money to my position. 18 months later, however, and $12 billion worth of this debt has gone. But if you are a beginner investor, you might still be worried that the earnings are still negative for Warner Brothers Discovery and there's still $44 billion worth of debt to pay. So first of all, in order to understand why you should be worried about this, let me explain the $3 billion loss uh, in 2023. Now, when Discovery purchased Warner Media, they did so with $53 billion worth of debt. Now, rather than say that we spent $53 billion on Warner Media in one year, what we do is we price that uh, Warner Media, Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, as a depreciating asset. So what we say is we purchased it for 50 billion and that will last 10 years. And therefore we can deduct 5 billion from our earnings every year for 10 years. Now, of course we didn't spend 53 billion that year, we borrowed it. It won't be until 2062 that we've actually spent $53 billion. But by adding this back into the balance sheet as depreciation and amortization, what it means is we can deduct it from our actual earnings and therefore our taxable earnings are a loss and therefore we have no taxes to pay. I don't think companies like talking about this because I don't think companies like being so open about the fact that they are using debt to avoid taxes. And again, I think the best evidence of Warner Brothers Discovery actually being profitable this year is the fact that their cash supply is up 400 million despite them paying 12 billion off in debt. Depreciation and amortization for 2023, I believe was 8 billion. If it hadn't been for our debt payments of 5.4 billion, our income in 2023 would have actually been around 5 billion. And so that is why it is so significant in 2024 that the debt due is 1.7 billion. 
That means that we should have around 3 billion in cash to play with at the end of 2024. You can even use my debt sheet that I'll link in the description. And if you use that, you can see that over the next five years, the total amount of debt we need to pay is 12 billion. So the total amount of debt we spent in the last 18 months uh, will, is now stretched over five years. 44 billion of debt might seem like an astronomical figure, but let me explain why it isn't. First, it, this is the notional debt. Notional debt means that this is the debt with all the interest payments. This is the total figure that is gonna need to be paid. And some of these payments are in 2062. And so if anyone is concerned about central bank interest rates rising and this affecting our debt position, it absolutely cannot possibly affect us. All of our debt is fixed rate until 2062, and then there is no more debt left to pay. One of the reasons I'm so confident on this is because I put all of their future debt, uh, all of their future debt payments into one Excel spreadsheet, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Anyone who watched my last videos has already been following it. I have now updated this sheet, however, with absolutely every single debt schedule update. Now with this sheet, I've worked out what we need free cash flow to be in order to be able to pay off all of our future debt. And what I've discovered is that if free cash flow was to drop this year by 50% and stay at 50%, then we would be fine. If it drops by 20% this year and stays 20% lower than when it is where it is today, then we will be flying. And if it does what it did this year and grows by 100%, then this stock is going to go to the moon. And yes, you did hear me correctly. The free cash flow of this stock in the last year has grown 100%. Now, uh, one of the reasons that I am doing pessimistic outlooks, pessimistic models into the future is because I do not expect this to happen every single year. In fact, this year was a bit of an outlier because in Q4 last year, if you remember, there was a hell of a lot of actor strikes, which meant that Warner Brothers Discovery actually managed to save lots of money by canceling lots of productions. I believe big institutional investors are gonna be watching this stock now. We are incredibly close from Warner Brothers Discovery being in a position where not only can they pay off debt, but they can start investing billions back into the business, which is what this company needs. But until then, I'm very happy with these this Q4 earnings. I've added more to my position, and if you wanted to go see my position, you can go to my eToro portfolio, and you can even copy me on eToro if you'd like. Uh, with all that said, I'm gonna go watch an episode of Friends, and the final thing I wanna leave you with is you, if you really wanna be rich, you gotta do this.